Yeah, so I'm just pulling up your um your accounts now. So uh, and also congratulations for uh, doing a target as well. It's amazing. Yeah, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. How uh how do you find how did you find it the uh the next time um, around? Well, I think like when we first spoke, <clears throat> when you gave me the advice as well, which I which I highly appreciate, was like don't rush it. Um, take your time. I think there's always this urge when you get this large sum of capital that you want to rush it. So yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it's probably it's... the main cause I'd say uh, for most people that you know when they do get to like level two or something, they just they just want to hammer it home to level three or um, yeah, like you say, rush the process. Absolutely, and and it's basically what I did. Um, so you know, even though you basically told me what not to do, I did it anyway, and it was just kind of a sort of self image issue that I had, which took a lot of reflection for myself. Um, and after doing quite a lot of reflecting and looking over my journal, I kind of then kind of realized that it was a self-image issue that I didn't truly believe that I was capable of being a trader, even though I've put in all the work and, you know, all the training and put myself in that mindset. It's just, I didn't believe in myself enough. And then, right. and once, then once that, like that feeling was on level two, right? Yeah, it was on level two. It's because like I made this yeah. massive achievement where, I kind of got to a stage where I really wanted to get there. And then after that hard work and dedication I put in and I got there, I then realized that I was started having self-image issues where is it, am I really worthy? Am I really capable of doing this? Can I really scale up? And then all of these thoughts flew in to my head while I was trying to trade. And that kind of sabotaged me from moving right. forward. Right. Well, I'm, I mean, to be honest, obviously you've reached the target uh, quite recently and so you are obviously capable um yeah and i guess has it improved your confidence um going into level two this time around um yeah absolutely so i think when i failed in december uh yeah. well not failed when i just lost the account in december it kind of yeah. so i think i messaged you and i said look i'm going to take some time off reflect and then come yeah. back in january yeah, or February. I remember that, yeah. and um i took that time off really sat down had a proper like think about everything went over my processes, kind of just went through everything again. Yep. Reached out to other traders as well, kind of just told them about my experience as well as yourself. And just took a lot on on board, really. Cool. And I think I just kind of evolved as a person. Um, I kind of just corrected my self-image. I kind of realized, you know, got a little bit serious, understood my why to why I was trading. Um, and then when I really got a good understanding about all of that, that's kind of what gave me that edge now. And I'm a lot more patient, a lot more disciplined and all of those things that I was, I kind of understand that I am them. It's not just, it wasn't just something I wasn't passing by. It's kind of like I've developed all these skills and I can actually utilize them. So it's given me yeah. that, that patience. And I think as well, um, you know, having that sort of mindset from coming from a nine to five, that kind of had me in that rush mentality all the time where I've kind of left that now. So I don't need to be in that rush mindset. And I think people who are in a nine to five, they shouldn't feel rushed. That's your worst enemy because you will literally force the market when you think you're not. And you will just Absolutely. blow, you will waste your money. Yeah. 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 And just getting caught up in that, uh, like chasing a loss or think trying to, you know, prove, prove a trade right when it, it's totally wrong or, you know, there's these situations that are the, the, the huge downside um, if you don't get a grip of it. Um, yep. but no, it's all, it's all good to hear that the improvements are there and, um, and yeah, we'll run over the metrics quickly. I'll see if I can point out any improvements, um, and any changes that I've seen from last time, um, that are visible. Yep. Um, but before we do that, just quickly, um, just give me a summary again of the, um, your, your, your sort of strategy. Um, so it's, it's purely price action. Um, yep. Obviously, I am aware of high impact news. So any right. elections and anything that could kind of cause a bit of volatility in the market, I'll be aware of it. Just yeah. during the weekend, I'll map that out for the week so that when I come in, do my evening or morning analysis, I'll be aware that, okay, there's some volatility potentially hitting the market at this time. Is my stops protected? Am I protected from any sort of slippage and so forth? Um, and then it's just purely price action. So I'm kind of just looking at price and then following structures. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. This is now your new level two, right? So sitting pretty much break even. 
um, overall. Yeah, basically. Um, um, I, had, I had a pretty good trade on today. It's just uh, it didn't really, it just came back to break even. So it is what it is, part of the game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you started off this, I noticed, on your, your AUD and um, Kajian. Uh, um, it, it wasn't EA. EA, I just kind of opened up a 0 0.01, just wanted to, just, yeah. Right, okay. Um, so I think when we spoke back uh, last year, I think um, I, I also have your, your level one account here. We take the money out, so obviously, you know, this isn't... Um, correct data but the statistics are correct so obviously we can see it's very good performance in terms of the average winning average losing um the risk to reward seems pretty on point as you'd expect when you do reach a target like this um and yeah i mean like i said before you've been able to reach a target again um so you know and so, sometimes you know if traders will only reach target once it, it can be you know just that lucky spell or they're not doing everything correct in terms of their strategy but they've managed to reach target once but obviously you've been able to do it again so surely um i would imagine that it has improved your confidence somewhat um we can have a quick look over at the scaling plan again and show you you know exactly um the the, the pathway that you you want to try and um go down in towards getting you know larger you know capital etc but um but yeah so so i think we spoke about the the, the amount of pairs you were looking at um the amount of time that you're gonna you know dedicate onto the the, the charts etc and i notice that you still um are using you know a, a good chunk of of uh pairs i think it was this, uh, two four six eight ten is that ten around ten yeah right, yeah yep, yep, yep it was a us dollar and aussie orientated that time basically right, okay yeah 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 and are you still uh, actively viewing all of these pairs as well or um no so it kind of just comes up to setups so um it, I, it will be week by week i mean there might be a particular setup for an entry that i might be looking at and if that setup is kind of nearing up then i'll put that on watch if it's nowhere near then i won't really bother looking at it for this week and then entertain it for the maybe the week after or the week after that okay okay yeah i mean in terms of um yeah, I'd say, you know, potential improvements for the future, not saying that it's a must, but maybe um, we could consider even uh, reducing this further, um, you know, just for, like you say, even more mental clarity and just keeping a, um, a grip over just certain, uh, sorry, certain uh, currencies, um, which is, I think it, the, the point when I was looking at around this amount, it kind of gave me a little bit more edge in terms of, um accuracy and um uh and yeah just slowing the whole process down which i think has kind of led to it's, i mean it's the difference between winning and losing isn't it the moment that you do slow it all down and you really do try to um go for the more accurate entries and also just leave the market when it's not going in your favor it's um it's always good um so yeah would you say you've used the same strategy on this one overall um yeah Looking i would, do. The last I would say, yeah, yeah absolutely i mean there's like it took me about two years to completely rewire my mindset from jumping strategies and kind of you know just kind of shopping around looking for different ways of trading but i found something that really fitted my personality really well so all pretty much all my trades kind of fit into that there might be like a discrepancy of maybe one or two trades that are invalid but not not in this account right now um in my previous one which i think was in december which the one which failed then yeah absolutely so in yep. this one i think it kind of just full focus making sure i'm doing everything right ticking all the boxes um of course you know at times i think i could be a little bit more patient with some trades there but um overall i mitigated my risk so uh, i took a smaller position size to protect myself for for that prematurity yeah yeah, well, I think these trades are, um, yeah, they're, they're spot on um, in terms of, you know, obviously you're 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 controlling the risks um, quite well, um, and yeah, I think we also mentioned about bringing the risk down further, you know, really going honing yep. in on um, yeah, lowering that. Um, but like the trade yep. lengths, it's all it's great to see. Um, obviously, you're you're going in for some of these trades that are, you know, for example, maybe perhaps. 10 20 minutes long up to um 
up to you know six hours many hours so the i think um the overall strategy here i think you placed um what is this 50 or so trades yeah 49 trades yeah i think um with 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 this strategy moving forward then yeah i don't see why you shouldn't get to uh level three this time um i think it was quite exciting to see that obviously you, you reach your target again um knowing that you know what your, your, your journey your story of going through that that uh, the account last year etc so in terms of moving forward then um what what sort of like um times are you going to be putting into the market like is it a set two hours per day or these times you're going to look so, at the market or yeah so um to be honest it's I've, I've kind of got my own routines now where I kind of just come every evening I'll do my evening analysis so I'm prepared for the morning then I do my morning routine then when I do my charting I'll do my morning analysis set my alerts and then the, I'll let the alerts kind of just let me know when I need to be by the charts because um, my why for trading is for freedom so I've kind of got that level of freedom now in my life. So I can be by the charts all the time, but I know from experience that it's not really useful. It's pointless. It's a waste of my time. I might as well go off and enjoy my life and then trade when I need to trade. And that's the main reason for it. Right. Um, so kind of, yeah, if I need to be by the charts, I'll be by the charts. Um, it's, you know, I, I do spend a, quite a bit of time at my computer anyway saying that, but, you know, I'll be doing quite a lot of stuff like this year. I think next month I'll be moving to Greece and then, okay. you know, I'll be kind of doing some other stuff with my life, but at the same time, still trading and scaling. I think for me, one of the reasons why I did the smallest um, account balance was because I wanted to experience scaling from the bottom to the top. So I wanted yep. to, yep. yeah, and I've, I've literally documented the whole thing. So I wanted to go from from literally starting at the bottom all the way to 4 million and then kind of just, you know, have that as a little achievement for myself. Yeah, yeah. Well, um. I think I mentioned it to you before, like it's, you do like 5% a month. Um, you can get to level eight in like just over 12 months. Um, just yeah. averaging around 5% a month. A month. Um, you know, some trades might even go a little bit less than that, a little bit more than that, but that's just an example there. And um, yeah, so obviously you're at level two now and then level three. And then, uh, and then it just scales on from that, just making that 10% target each time, keeping the, um, keeping the risk low. That's a, probably the biggest important factor taking your time and just keeping the risk really really low um, yeah absolutely i mean like to get to level seven you know there's no time frame on it as well so no, yeah yeah you know I, I know i know deep down that i'll give myself like two years to do it but knowing myself um given the opportunities that we're going to have throughout the next few months yeah especially with the dxy and how it's shaping up um you know, it definitely looks like, you know, I could probably scale up to level seven um, before the year's over. So, you know, it just shows the abundance of opportunity out there. And that's yeah. trading with 0.3% risk. So that says a yeah. huge amount, you know, and that's the yeah, thing. Exactly. With, yeah. yeah. That's the thing that I think a lot of people get wrong. And I did at the beginning for, for quite a while was I used to think 5% or 10% was just so little um, in a way. But when you half that or you half that again, so you're trading with 0 0.3, you're no longer trading with 5%, you know, you're trading with so much more. Um, and it just makes it a little bit more interesting and it gives you more space to let your edge play out. So I think for a lot of traders as well, um, you know, reducing your risk just makes it a little bit more, um, a little bit more of an adventure, but at the same time, it gives you so much more protection. So absolutely yeah. yeah. It takes away the emotion um to some extent and just it you you then just using pure skill in order to yeah. um, build and build and build. But um, but yeah, like you say, level seven, level seven, let's say you do reach it in one year's time or however long it takes you. Um, yeah, if you continue to just be so disciplined with that 0.3 or whatever low risk you're using, um, you get in you know, a year's time, then you can, you know, start operating with much, much bigger stop losses. 1.5% on that account would then be, you know, this, which is huge um, from the... Uh, on the, the pathway and the journey and the, as the numbers grow. Um, so we can see that the, 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 the numbers get very, very drastic. And what, in most cases, when people do reach these, I'd say these three, six, seven, and eight, um, sometimes I'm, let's say if they're, 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 they're allowed up to this amount, 3,360 on uh, level six, they might only use, let's say 
four hundred, five hundred dollars. Yeah, you know, because they don't need trade. to make that much. Yeah, this. yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 risk the whole thing in order to to you know get a huge Absolutely. reward out of it. I um, I think that's that's one of the nicest things about having a large account. Like if you go and yeah. get let's say a ninety thousand pound low risk account, you know, and then you start trading with you know two hundred pound risk, you can have you can you can literally grow that account very slowly but you can get payouts along the way and you'd literally feel a lot more comfortable doing that because you know a thousand pound two thousand pounds payout on a 90k account is a small yeah. percentage on the account but at the same time it's a big impact on somebody at working class yeah exactly and you know it obviously depends on the trade and what they want out of it and their lifestyle how much it costs etc but but like you say yeah i mean if you get through the levels and effectively you're allowed to risk up to this which is 1.5 percent but you're just going a lot lower then um like you say yeah you can just build the account very very slowly as well as um you know we're, we're drawing some out as well obviously that doesn't affect the scaling process so you, let's say you was to withdraw i don't know even like you get up to a big account and you're withdrawing one percent a month um those one percent still add up and then you can move to yeah. the next level and and, and so on